Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to, and if you're joining us from the beginning, the Dawah Conference of Ikna. So my name is Yasser Aslam here from the Gain Peace office in Chicago. So without further ado, I do want to let you know for this program, the title of it is Dawah Reimagined. And now um, we are going to talk about the top 10 ideas for Muslim families. Now, I recommend if you guys would like to get a pen and paper ready and let's get started. And once again, I'm here with from my from uh, from my state, our area code, Dr. Sabil Ahmed. Dr. Sabil Ahmed is the executive director of Gain, the Gain Peace Project, the outreach and Dawah department of I the Islamic Circle of North America. As the director of Gain Peace, brother, uh, Dr. Sabil's aim is to bring out the commonalities and build bridges between people of various faiths, races, and nationalities and show them the beautiful faith of Islam. Um, with our fellow Americans and actually worldwide too. Some of the projects of Gain Peace include, um, you know, advertising, mess, uh, you know, messages of spirituality via buses, billboards, um, trains. We've done, you know, TV, radio, newspapers, subhanAllah. So again, the title of this session altogether is Dawa Reimagined. And Dr. Sabil has given uh, many outreach presentations and workshops in various cities all across the United States on the topics of Sharia, freedom of speech, comparative religion, youth empowerment. In fact, I think might be among the most highest in demand uh, people for the Q&A that usually comes after open houses. And um, a little bit about his background is that uh, I know, again, bios, I just would like to introduce everybody that after completing his medical education from the uh, from the Caribbean, he decided to actually pursue Dawa work, his passion, full time. So Subhanallah, Dr. Sabil is not just an MD, but he actually Subhanallah continued his education and he holds a PhD in the preservation of the Quran. Uh, it's very important for us to have this information because this is actually what we encounter, Inshallah. Currently, um, you know, he's working as a full time educator for Islam. For several years now, Alhamdulillah, and you know the plan of tackling Islamophobia to convey to convey the beautiful, peaceful message of Islam. He, he's married happily with three children and resides with his family in Morton Grove, Illinois. And Alhamdulillah, I have the honor and blessing to work with him several, several you know times a week. Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. And with that, Inshallah, Dr. Sabil, top ten ways that we can do Dawa, Dawa reimagined, Dawa reimagined. Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, was salatu was salam ala Rasulillah, wa ala alihi was habi and maina mabat. My dear Muslims, my dear brothers, my dear sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, it's an honor that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us. Not only He chose us and made us Muslims, He has blessed us, He has honored us to give us the time and to realize the importance of outreach. And to be present here so we can share and we can learn and inshallah we can go out and propagate the message so no matter how much we thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's not enough and we pray to allah that he accept it from each single one of us Amin. now the topic which was given to me is the topic of how can muslims along with the families how can we get involved in this auspicious and honored work of sharing islam with humanity Last Thanksgiving, there was a knock at the door, on the front door of my home. I was not expecting anyone. It was dark outside. It was chilly outside. And I was a little bit fearful because at that time, who may be coming and knocking at the door? When I looked from the hall, I found out there is a Caucasian person standing there wearing sunglasses, even though it's dark outside. I was thinking, you know, I was joking with my wife and I said, you know, they are here, you know, the FBI, I mean, they are here. And she, you know, smiled, but then we opened the door. As we opened the door, there was a lady standing there and she had a big smile on her face. And she said, I came to thank you. I said, really? Well, welcome, but who are you, my dear sister? And she said that I am the daughter of the, your neighbor. And she drove, she said, from Wisconsin to meet uh, her mom, who is my next door neighbor. And she's actually holding a Islam brochure, a postcard that 
my family we sent out actually we went door to door to give it out to the neighbors so as she came there she found the postcard and she said you know she read it she liked it and then this is what she mentioned i came to invite your whole family for thanksgiving dinner with our family so the next day on the day of thanksgiving in the evening time we all got dressed up my fa family and i and we went and knocked at their door. They opened the door, they invited us in, and they made us sit in the middle. And I was thinking, you know, this is a Thanksgiving dinner, man, where is the dinner? And instead of the dinner, they kept on asking questions about Islam. Questions about the major misconceptions, you know, what is jihad, uh, the Sharia law, because they may be thinking, watching the Fox News, the fake news, that what is the Sharia law? They have misconceptions. They ask about the Sharia, women in Islam, uh, about Jesus, peace be upon him. So many, many questions, literally one and a half hours, it passed away and I was thinking, where is the dinner? After one and a half hours, we had to leave. They got busy and uh, we left without dinner, but that's fine. What was conveyed was more priceless than anything they could have given to us. So at that point, I realized that as brother Ali Dawa mentioned, as brother, uh, you know, brother Hijasi mentioned, many of our fellow Americans, they have not met Muslims, they have not met Muslim families. For that reason, they have fear of the unknown, which is quite natural. If I have not been to Japan, for example, if I have to go there, I may have that slight fear of the unknown, the culture, the language, the people, how they will treat, all of this, this is just natural. But when people, when we meet each other face to face, when we eat with each other, when we socialize with each other, the barriers, inshallah, they will drop. As Brother Hijazi is mentioning, the couple who took shahada, mashallah, may Allah reward you, Brother Hijazi. The couple who took shahada, never, they never met a Muslim. But after interacting with the Muslims, they realize that Muslims are just like any humans. They're good apples, they're bad apples. We need to just focus on the faith and not just judge the faith, but the actions of a few misguided individuals. And at that point, I realized when I was there with my family in that house of the neighbors, how important it is for me not just to do dawa individually, but to take my family with me. So they can know and they may realize that, yes, this is the Muslim family. Look at the kids, well behaved. And this is how they are greeting the, the greeting of peace. So why involve the family? What are the top 10 projects that Muslims can do, Muslim families can do? First and foremost, I would suggest each single one of us, and obviously this advice is for me initially and then to all of us. So first and foremost, it's important for us that we need to build rapport with our own families. Yes, we need to make sure that we have that connection with our kids, especially obviously wife, you know, spouses and our kids. And the reason is this, if we want them to do dawa, we need to start them young. We just cannot wait until they are teenagers and you know, then knock at their door of their bedroom, tell them to come to the dawa booth. There would be a lot of resistance. So we need to start young and we need to start, we need to make sure that we are the role models for them. I mean, obviously Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but they see us, they watch us how we interact with our spouses, how we interact with the non-Muslims, our activism, they are watching, they are listening. So we need to make sure that they are involved with us. Second thing to build a rapport with our family, and this is all part of Dawa, within the context of Dawa, is to make sure that uh, we socialize with them, with our kids, not just in the context of Islam and activism and Dawa, you know, playing sports with them, for example. So recently bought a scooter, not a big scooter, just a small electric scooter for my kids. And obviously they ride it and Yasir, I also ride it sometimes, obviously wearing the helmet, right? Making sure you have the proper gear. Ride it, that's fine. They enjoy, they watch me. Sometimes we, we ride together, you know, cautiously, right? Be careful. So building the rapport, making sure that they are groomed towards Dawa organically not us pushing them and waiting until they're teenagers, building the rapport with our family is very, very important. Second important aspect is building rapport with the neighbors. 
before I knocked the door, knocked at the door with myself and my family to our neighbors' homes, we made sure that we already built a rapport with the neighbors. Imagine if they don't know us, if I stand there knocking at the door, they see from the whole a man is there in a Middle Eastern looking man with a beard, they know the Muslim, this, that's a Muslim. And all of these images that they see on Fox News, they may rush back in their head and they may not open the door, they may become fearful. Human psychology. So what are some of the ways to build rapport with the neighbors? Even before we say anything to them about Islam, it is important for us that they are comfortable in conversing with us, in being you know, around us. So building the rapport. So one of the ways that my family and I, what we are doing is, the weather is good. Brother Ali Dawa, the weather is, mashallah, still good in Chicago. The winter is coming very soon, inshallah. Allah protect and make it easy for all of us. We take walks. Maybe at night time, but most of the time in the daytime, right? We take walks. The reason we take the walks in the neighborhood, we want to meet the neighbors. We want to greet the neighbors. We want to build a rapport with the neighbors. We want to do away with the fear of the unknown. Who are this Muslim family? We are just casually walking, smiling, greeting, sometimes standing in front of some other house, meeting with their families, building the rapport. Once a rapport is built, yeah, said this is what I what we do usually is. If they become comfortable, that's when we exchange telephone numbers or contact information. If more rapport is built, inshallah, then we exchange about, you know, what kind of job do they do? How many children do they have? What grades, what hobbies? You know, something about the family, the needs that they may have. So Dawah is not just about speaking about Tawheed. Yes, it is. But it comes in the context of building the rapport with individuals. And that's what Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You know, the very first wahi that he received, he came to his wife, I, uh, Khatija radiallahu ta'ala anha. And she consoled him by saying that Allah is not going to disown you. Because you are good to your neighbors, to your guests, to the orphans, the widows. You are, Allah is not going to disown you. So before he was appointed as a prophet, or before he was given the honor to be a prophet at the age of 40, he was a person who was a person visible in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Not just on the YouTube, not just on one section of the neighborhood, or in the home. Yes, those are important things to do dawah through social media. I say social media is king. However, that face-to-face -face approach is no, there is no substitute for that one. So take a walk, get to know the neighbors, get their information, and then later on you can use that inshallah. So once the rapport is built, alhamdulillah. If you say something about Islam, exchange dishes, for example, or exchange brochures, all of those things with your family, they are going to receive it. They will be receptive. There are more chances. They will look into it. They will read it, right? Inshallah. The third important thing is once the rapport is built, now you can do this with your family, with the neighbors, is that once you know their information about their children, their uh, you know, background and hobbies and needs, now you can, now you can uh, congratulate them, for example. Suppose if their daughter, their child, if they pass eighth grade, right, graduation, go and meet them, you know, give them some, uh, some gift, for example, uh, you know, a greeting card, congratulating them. If they have some promotion at their job, congratulate them. If they bought a new car, you, know, you get the picture. So congratulating them, complimenting them is there to strengthen the rapport, building the bonds and increasing the chances of them being receptive to Islam. All right, so that is one other way that we can, inshallah, even before we pass the Islamic brochures or convey to the message of Islam, inshallah, building the rapport and complimenting and congratulating them. Even if some tragedy happens in their homes, for example, you know, their parents may pass away, some uh, chronic illness may happen, somebody get injured, they may lose the job. And all of these occasions, we should do condolences. I mean, obviously within the Islamic etiquettes, the distance, social distance, what to say, what not to say, according to the Quran and the authentic Sunnah, we need to make sure we are aware of that. The next important activity that we can do as a family is 
to take your children and your family to the Dawa booths. The Ali Dawa, inshallah, if I, I have some family in London. If I do come there, it will be my honor to join you to be at the speaker's corner. Never been there, been to London many times, but was so busy, not able to join and go to the speaker's corner. Inshallah, one day may Allah accept it from us. So going to Dawa booths is so important, especially with the families. And I'll just give you one example, inshallah. When I was at the Dawa booth with my family, you know, wife and uh, three kids, I was in front of the booth conversing with people, passing out the brochures. Very few people, they took the brochures. Rest of them, you know, they had something in their hands. They were smiling, greeting and passing, but no one was stopping by. But when my son, who is like, what, five years of age, how much longer, Yasin? not going to work no inshallah i'll be careful mm -hmm. so as i took my son he was three at that time i gave him some brochures i was watching him and he was passing the brochures yes here and almost everyone that took his brochure I, maybe like 10 percent from me about 90 percent from him you know out of courtesy you know at the end of the day we cannot control if they are going to read it or not, but at least passing out the brochure. Secondly, our children, they will realize the importance of Dawa. You know, after coming back from the Dawa booth, my other son, who was like maybe two years of age at that time, I asked him the question, you know, Ibrahim, what do you like about going with Abuji to Dawa booths? And he said, I want everyone to become a Muslim. I said, Subhanallah. May Allah make you a good da'i, right? Alhamdulillah. Mm -hmm. Next important one is, as you build a rapport with the neighbors, write down their contact information, their needs, and, up, and have your family members, especially the youth in your family, give them a call to see, just as a checkup call, how they are doing. You know, I always say, you know, the Dawa training, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala may not hold me responsible for the people in China or Russia, or the people in Africa, but surely he may hold me responsible to my immediate neighbors. Have I conveyed the message of Islam to them? How did I treat them and vice versa? So immediate neighbors is so important and obviously the whole world is the neighborhood, but immediate neighbors are very, very important. The next important activity that we can do with our families is that there are so many volunteer opportunities uh, in the neighborhood, you know, the soup kitchens, uh, the blood donations, helping out uh, in the public libraries, for example, street cleanup. There are so many activities that my village of Morton Grove, they're always requesting uh, volunteers. Go there as a family, right? Husband, wife, children, go there. We want people to see that this is what Islam is. Islam is a faith of action. So as we always say, concept if you look into dawa as a mathematical equation it is knowledge plus action means invitation equals dawa it's not just passing the brochure inviting them being visible out there there we go that's an important guide how to share the message of islam next important aspect with the neighbors and as a family would be that if you are going to have a garage sale you know, there are garage sales people are opening nowadays. I mean, obviously, with social distancing. Have a garage sale, joint garage sale with other Muslim families, and also have free Islamic items up there. Why not, you know, free Islamic items, inshallah? And mention to them, this is in a, a price, these items, but these items over here for your education is absolutely free. Also have some cupcakes there, some food there. You know, build a rapport again with the excuse of a garage sale. If you are more comfortable, not in the house, but outside, do a barbecue for the neighborhood. Invite, you know, two, three families at a time in the backyard, in the front yard, maybe in the park somewhere. So social distancing, eating together. You know, this is one of the ways, Yasir, that I can get from the seer of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that he had wonderful ways of dawah. One of the ways he used to invite people for meals and convey the message. So these are some of the ways and one other one, I mean, there's a long list. I want to give more time for Q&A. One quick one would be as the kids have gone back to school, either the hybrid or the Zoom or any which way, they may be going over social studies, world religions, you know, Middle Eastern history, any which way request through the child 
to the teacher, the professor, that my dad or our family, we can give a presentation on this topic, that topic relevant to what they are, what they are learning. In that way, inshallah, as a family, these projects. So at the end of the day, Yasir and all the Muslims listening over here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has honored us and given, given us this responsibility of sharing the message. Don't do it individually, do with your families. Inshallah, they are the ones to replace us. They are the ones to, inshallah, become leaders of the masajis and da'is and, you know, chair people of the dawa organizations. Prepare them at a young age and inshallah, as they grow up, they will be following Quran, authentic sunnah, and they would be sharing the message of Islam, becoming ambassadors to all of humanity. May Allah accept it from all of us. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallah khair for sharing those 10 points.